All right, hey guys, what's up? It's 8 Byte Brian here, and I'm back to do flea market, thrift store, and other miscellaneous pickups and finds for September. I've got a lot to get through this month, um, possibly more than usual. So I'll start off like I always do, and we'll start off with toys and other miscellaneous stuff. Uh, some of this stuff I did get when I was at RetroCon, so some of you guys saw my recent posts of... Uh, RetroCon out in Oaks, PA, they have every year in September, uh, usually at the end of the month. It's an awesome time out there. Um, I find a lot of good toys at a lot of good prices and hard to stuff, uh, hard to find stuff that usually you can't find anywhere else. So depending on the price that I pick it up for, I know it's a convention, but I kind of chalk it up to a flea market find because if I would have paid only a couple bucks for it, um, at a convention and at a flea market, then the only difference is, is the place where you get it from. So just because there's a higher, you know, accumulation of stuff, it's all really the same. I think it just, you know, matters if you get it for a good deal. So anyway, enough uh, talking aside, let's get right into it. So first off, um, I got these, which I'm planning on doing a review for, and these are from a series of toys called computer warriors and uh, i paid eight bucks for the pair they're still uh totally sealed in the uh in the package and these were really cool because they were like robots and they kind of cashed in on the whole gobot transformer phase but they were like computer chips and pepsi cans and weird soccer balls and they would transform um into like circuit boards and stuff like that so i won't go into too much detail of that now because i do want to uh have a review of these guys planned later on um, but they go for about 35 bucks each and I only paid four dollars a piece for like totally mint sealed um, figures so that's an awesome pickup I got those at RetroCon um, also I got at uh, RetroCon I picked up a lot of stuff for another toy line that I'm getting ready to review soon and that is Battle Beasts uh, this green thing on the right here is called the Deer Stalker, and it's a carrier for all of the uh, the troops. And the Battle Beasts I had already had before, but I didn't have any of their weapons, and I didn't have any of the ca the carriers. Um, this one's in nice minty shape, and I paid fifteen for that, which really wasn't bad. But then I found this one that's missing the back cover on it for only three bucks. So two of them for under twenty, and I found all six weapons. Although I don't think they all go to the correct characters for all six of my battle beasts. So I was super, super happy about that because I've been looking for weapons and accessories for these things for years and they're impossible to find. Um, so, you know, they're a really cool line of little, uh, little action figures and I can't wait to do a review on them and super happy that I found them. And also, I think I'll just go through what I found at RetroCon first. That way it'll kind of eliminate a lot of the confusion. Um, I also found for five bucks a uh, new in package set of cutie figurines. And you're probably thinking, what in the hell are cutie figurines? Well, these were kind of like the same thing as like Monster in My Pocket or Muscle Figurines except they cash in on the gem franchise and you have like these neon pink and purple and yellow and orange neon colored uh, like rocker girls and it's just what can I say if you weren't born in the 80s you wouldn't understand this is just like a unisex toy so you know I'm sure a lot of people would be like well what are you doing that for that's a girl's toy well I can tell you right now I'm planning a My Little Pony review and probably a Rainbow Bright review so if you know, quote-unquote, girls' toys aren't your thing from the 80s, you know, feel free to unsubscribe from my channel because I think that that type of, like, label-making and bigotry is just corny. So I just think these things are awesome, they're crazy, they're wild, and I can't wait to do a review on them, and I don't care that, you know, they're girls' figurines or whatever they are. They're just neat, they're crazy and cool, and, uh, you know totally 80s so got this whole little set for five bucks and can't wait to open that up and do a review on them and also for my uh dc superheroes line with the superpowers made by kenner i picked up for three bucks a uh, fairly rare uh justice jogger and what this is is it uh 
uh, was a device made for Superman, which, God almighty, I don't even think I can make sense of it. Uh, he, he, he needed it to be able to, like, go as fast as the Flash and, like, access the, the, the speed force or something and travel through time. Um, so he would, like, strap himself in there and you wind it up and, uh, probably see a little bit here. The, uh, the legs walk like that so it holds the figure and it will walk holding the figure. And this is actually a pretty uncommon little piece to find. It's missing the hood that would go over the head, but still, I mean, there's not even any of these listed on eBay. It's a really, really hard piece to find, and happy to add that to my 99% uh, Justice League collection. Um, also, I picked up this really awesome Tiger LCD Batman watch, which I replaced the battery to it, and uh, I have a Zelda one made by Nintendo, and you can play um, Batman, I think it's Batman Returns? Yeah, this is Batman Returns, and you can play like a little Batman Returns uh, mini game. I don't know if I can get it to make any sound or not. Although the weird thing with these watches is when you leave the battery in, it just stays on. I don't know how to turn it off, so the battery might have gone dead already. Uh, but it does work. It's really cool. Paid five bucks for this, and you know, um, this is like a thirty dollar watch online. You know, they're 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 really collectible and neat. Um, so, you know, definitely glad that I found that. And let's see, I also found this crazy thing. If you've ever watched uh, Classic Game Room a lot, um, I like a lot of the old Tiger toys. And this is another one that failed, but was trying to be really interesting and futuristic before its time. And this is called the Tiger R-Zone. And it kind of looks like, if you're familiar with Dragon Ball Z like Vegeta and um, Raditz, like their, uh, their, their power scouters that they would wear, like they would have it on their head and you'd have like this little thing where it lines up with your eye and this little plate, you put a game in here and I know I look like a total jackass right now with this thing on. So I guess that's probably why this didn't do too well in the first place. But you put a game inside the controller and you play the game, it's projected from a projector in the back on this little plastic lens and you're playing it in like virtual reality. So, um, you know, the console did horribly. It only had maybe like 10 games, 15 max that came out for it. But it was just really neat that, you know, they were willing to try something that far out there and different, you know, back in like 1995, 94, 95. That's crazy. You know, technology wasn't anywhere near at the point to be ready for virtual reality yet. Uh, let's see. And what else did I pick up? I think that actually pretty much might be it, aside from, um, I got this little, uh, Pac-Man. Uh, super high bouncy ball, and it is from the, uh, what is this now, the, can't read it, uh, the Namco, the Namco Cyber Station, which used to be an arcade in the late 70s and early 80s, I believe up in New York, uh, where one of their factories were, and they turned part of the factory into an arcade and they closed it down, and this is a pretty rare piece of history from that, uh, you know, because like how you would go into, uh, you go to like Dave and Buster's or Chuck E. Cheese and turn in your tickets for like uh, prizes. This would be one of the things that you could get, you know, if you got a high enough score or got enough tickets or whatever. And that's a series I want to do a review on, on that whole, um, the whole history behind the Namco Cyber Station. I think that's really cool. Um, so I think that is pretty much it as far as toys and collectibles from RetroCon goes. Uh, so, aside from that, I picked up a whole uh, nice stack of Nintendo Power magazines. I already have a good little collection as it is, but uh, these were some other ones I didn't have. Um, this one has the cover of Power Blade on it, which is a rare game that came out for the NES. Uh, you have one, this is when they transitioned over to the Super Nintendo with Street Fighter 2. Uh, really nice Super Mario Bros. 3 Nintendo Power. Um, then you have one very generic with, uh, Vice Project Doom. I've never even played that game before. And a really cool, uh, Nintendo Power Strategy Guide for Final Fantasy for the original Nintendo. So that's pretty unusual to see. 
uh, all these strategy guides. So very cool. I think I paid like a buck fifty each for these. Maybe like a buck, two bucks. No, no more than two bucks a piece. Uh, so really cool to read through. And then I also picked up uh, both of these for just a dollar, which is insane. I seem to have a lot of Tiger products this month, but I picked up a uh, Tiger, a Marvel Comics licensed X-Men handheld game, which I love the artwork on the front with Wolverine with his claws out, and you have Magneto just, you know, causing all kinds of general havoc and just being a being a jerk. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I love these Tiger LCD games, no matter what people say, like how crappy they are, you know. They were fun before you had Game Boy or anything like this. Even though the games stunk, the artwork and the design that went into these are so fun. And, you know, for five, ten bucks when you were a kid in the 80s and 90s, you know, you didn't have a Game Boy. This was it. This is what you played your games on. So I like the design a lot and really cool. Paid only a dollar for this. And another rare game. Uh, this was made by uh, Konami. This isn't made by Tiger. Um... Konami actually put out their own series of handheld games, and this is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Splinter Speaks, and uh, the turtles actually talk, like they say Calabunga, and like Splinter says stuff, and they say stuff when they die, and I got the manual for it and everything too, and just really cool, and uh, really fun, I played this, had a good time playing it for a buck, so, you know, it's Ninja Turtles, what's there not to like? Um... Let's see, and aside from other toys, I also picked up this really cool uh, little PVC uh, Super Mario 3 figurine. You can see it has the, uh, has the raccoon tail on, and I think this might have been a McDonald's toy. I'm really not sure, uh, but he was really, really grimy when I picked him up, but cleaned him up, and he's sitting uh, on top of, uh, you know, next to my NES and stuff, so really cool. Cool little collectible. And I think that pretty much does it for toys, I believe. So uh, now let's move into video games. Um, this I picked up, uh, Flea Market Find. This is a Philips CDI game, which you don't see too much out in the wild. And uh, I'm sure it's a terrible game, but for a buck, it's called uh, Name That Tune. And I believe this goes for like 20 to $40 online, so a nice uncommon find out in the wild. Wish I had a CDI to play it on, but still, hey, for a buck, I'll definitely pick it up and add it to the old collection. And as far as CD games go, uh, I found two Sega CD games, one uh, by the name of Sewer Shark, which is a really popular game for the Sega CD, and uh, unfortunately no case, but uh, just a little jewel case missing the manual. And it's kind of common, fairly uncommon, I think. It's listed as common, but uh, I don't see a lot of them, so I honestly think it's that's kind of wrong. I think it's probably more uncommon than people give it credit for. And then I found this cool-looking game called Surgical Strike, which uh, one thing I love about Sega CD games is unlike PS1 games, they had all this full-motion video, like, you know, in between with, like, these bad like C and D list actors and it'd be like, ah, oh, you can do it, blow up the building or whatever. And like, it, it's just hilarious. If you've never played a CD, a, uh, a Sega CD game or something like that, you know, you owe it to, to yourself. Um, the best one I can think of to play, if you ever played in the arcade, the CD uh, version's much better, is the uh, Aerosmith, the uh, Degeneration X game where you're shooting um, CDs, you know, at, like, evil villains to, like, you know, make sure Aerosmith makes it to their concert and keep music and rock and roll free and alive, and it's just so cheesy and awesome, so, you know, we have, uh, Sega CD and FMV to thank for that, <laughs> and, uh, picked up a couple of good Super Nintendo games, too, uh, these two were just a buck each, I picked up, uh, WWF Royal Rumble for the Super Nintendo, pretty fun game, nothing special, and uh, this is uh, WrestleMania, the arcade game. I'm sure you guys remember that, where like you, it was just kind of like Mortal Kombat wrestling, where you like uh, the Undertaker hit people with tombstones and stuff, like literal like cartoon headstones, and you just do jump kicks and stuff, really fast paced and um, fun. And uh, this is one of my favorite games playing. 
uh, with one of my best friends, Bob, when I was a uh, when I was a kid. So awesome to find that. Gonna love playing that again. And I found also uh, Super Star Wars um, Super Empire Strikes Back for the Super Nintendo for only five bucks. Uh, so, you know, you can't beat that. That's like a $15 to $20 game, and it's a lot of fun. It's frustrating, but the graphics are good, the music is good, and, uh, it's a really good port of anything Star Wars for Super Nintendo. So if you're a, uh, Star Wars fan and you like Super Nintendo stuff, you know, I definitely recommend check it out. Uh, aside from that, let's see. I also picked up a, uh, PS1 Mini. Pick this up complete for only 12 bucks. I already have a PS1, but I like the design of the PS1 Mini. Just a neat looking little console. Amazing. I mean, this is like smaller than the Dreamcast, and they fit all that tech in that little tiny PS1. So, very cool little find there. Uh, also picked up a couple of Game Boy games. Nothing too great. Uh, picked up Qbert. For the Game Boy Color, which is pretty fun, plays true to the original. Uh, this is Tetris DX for the Game Boy Color. Actually, all of them were for the Game Boy Color. I believe these were all the ones I picked up. And uh, this is, uh, what does this say here? Can't read what it says. This is um, Ms. Pac Man. This is the Color Edition. So that's a special edition for the Game Boy Color. <clears throat> and honestly, the Miss Pac-Man does not play well at all. It, it, it's weird how it scrolls, the graphics are too small, so I don't really like that on the Game Boy. It kind of plays crappy. And, uh, let's see, I also found... Oof. This is kind of big, as you could hear. found a couple of computers this past month. I found a uh, Radio Shack Tandy TRS-80 that I paid 30 bucks for. So uh, I know you guys are waiting on my IBM PC Junior review, which I promise is coming. Um, just the floppy disk drive failed on it. So um, I might only be able to review it in like the basic mode, which like literally I mean like basic programming, which is what a lot of these computers were capable of. Because this has no outside peripherals, this computer. Uh, it's literally just the computer. You hook it up to a monitor, and you have a screen where you can type in basic code, for those of you who remember basic. And um, then there's specialized cartridges that uh, go on the side here. So there were, uh, like, maybe 30 games made for the computer, and uh, that's the only thing you can use with it. But still, pretty neat little find, and I hope to review that soon. And also... Um, one of my best finds, but uh, I did pay a little bit for it. This is something I had been saving up for a while. So uh, this actually got at a great local game shop near me. This was not a flea market find, but I paid, uh, I think, only like 85 bucks for the system, which is cheap. Because uh, I already have the printer, and I mean, online, these are like $170 and up. They're, they're not cheap. I mean, you're going to pay 50 bucks just for the main console alone. And this is the Atari 800XL. And uh, why this is special to me is because this was the first console that I ever owned as a kid. My dad got this from a neighbor of ours who worked from uh, worked for Radio Shack. And it uh, was like maybe 84, 85. And this came out in like 1983, I believe. So by that point, it was already getting a little outdated because in like the mid to early 80s, like every other year your computer was outdated because technology was moving so fast. So I think my dad bought the whole thing off him for like 20 bucks or he got it for free. And the only game we had for it was Pac-Man. And, uh, you know, it was really super complicated to hook up and that's why we didn't use it that much. Um, but still, it's the first thing I remember. It's one of my first video game experiences. And I just like, I really love the look of this with the brown and the cream coloring. And, uh, you know, it just totally says, like, early 80s computing has, a, I mean, this thing just screams Atari. And, uh, you know, has a lot of special memories for me. If you guys remember, I found some of the uh, 800XL cartridges the month before. So now I have a system to play them all on. Uh, this is a, an Atari writer cartridge where you can use it to make word processing documents. I paid like two bucks for that. 
And then also with it, and this was for the $85 price tag, uh, this is the Atari 1010 uh, cassette reader. And back then there were a lot of games, like I showed last month, that Sea Dragon game and the one for the ZX Spectrum. You would actually play uh, games and save your programs to a cassette drive that you would hook up to your computer. So I'm working on getting a floppy drive for the Atari 800XL. Works flawlessly. And I'm probably going to do uh, some of my first computer reviews with the Atari 800XL because it's just such an amazing system that was so far ahead of its time at the time. Um, so now leading right off of that, these were some of the uh, Atari games that I found over this past month. This is for the Atari XE, which was one of the last systems to come out in the 8-bit cycle that directly competed with the NES when it first re uh, released. And this is a game called Crossbow for the Atari XE. Uh, fairly common, nothing too special about it, but you just don't see a lot of XE games out because it only had like a two-year run. So a lot of the games are pretty scarce, and this will play in the Atari 800 XL and also in the 400 and 800 series and 1200 series of computers. So even though it looks totally different, it'll still work with my computer. I also found a Jumbo Jet Pilot for the 800 XL, and a very rare game called uh, Big Bird's Fun House. That's about a $40 game that I paid like a dollar or two for, really uncommon. Uh, Pac-Man for the Atari 800XL. Centipede, which looks and plays really, really good on the 800XL, very close to the original arcade port. And Space Invaders, which I paid a buck for. So now I've got a lot of great software to go with uh, my Atari 800. And last month, you guys probably might remember that I showed that I got an Atari 7800. So I uh, also got a bunch of, oh my god, excuse me. So I also got a bunch of Atari 7800 games. And uh, some of the ones that I got were Karatika for the 7800, which is pretty, pretty bad, honestly. Nothing to be proud of there. Dig Dug. Ms. Pac-Man. Xevious, which is a great game for the 7800. If you have a 7800, you should definitely pick that up. Pole Position 2, another fun game. And this is one on one Jordan versus Bird uh, for the 7800. Joust, which is a really fun game. And this I just picked up recently at a local game store near me, Double Dragon for the 7800. Yeah, this came out on the 2600 first, but this is the 7800 version. So, very rare game. Uh, I paid like 30 bucks for it, because unfortunately that's what it's worth. You're not going to get a deal, you know, on games like this. But uh, being a collector, I just wanted to have it for my console. Uh, it's just cool to be able to play Double Dragon before it was an NES release, so I kind of like that. Uh, Centipede for the 7800, which plays fantastic. Galaga, which also plays well. Not as good as the other um, arcade ports, but good. And Food Fight, a moderately uncommon game for the 7800. And then for the Atari 2600, I found a extremely rare game that I almost passed over paid uh, three bucks for, goes for about 20, and this is by iMagic, called Laser Gates. Um, this is a ridiculously rare uh, game for the Atari 2600, and I only saw one other copy uh, available on eBay. So uh, this was in a uh, like a two for five bin at a local game store near me, and I guess, you know, he just didn't know it was in there, and I honestly, I, I knew it was rare, but not that rare. And, you know, for three bucks, that's awesome. You know, that, that's something easily, you know, you could have, you can price at 20 bucks, you know, in a, in a game store. But, hey, sometimes you get lucky. Check out your local game stores. You're not always going to, you know, get raked over the coals with everything. And so, finally, 
I got a lot to go through, but let's do NES. And I think I have more NES from this past month than I have ever had before. All right, it's actually like a leaning tower of NES games. Uh, picked up Mad Max for the NES, which I'm interested to see how that will play, because that looks really cool, and especially if you like the movie. Um, you know, kind of weird that it actually came out for the system, so it looks cool. Uh, a game that's absolutely awesome I recommend. This is uh, Dragon Spirit, the new legend. And this is if you like shoot 'em ups um, This is like a shoot 'em up RPG, which I know sounds crazy, but you're a dragon, and then you turn into, like, this dragon plane that has two dragons, little dragons on either sides of you, and you shoot spread fire, and there's bosses at the end of the levels, and, uh, you know, only a buck, but fantastic game. Uh, picked up Bubble Bobble. Uh, I think this was, like, four or five bucks. Label's kind of beat up, but still a good find and a very, very fun game. Definitely pick it up. Uh, another rare game I picked up is Image Fight for the NES, and this is honestly one of the hardest games I have ever played on the NES. It's just absolutely brutal. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. Just a really tough shooter. Um, good game, but just ridiculously hard. And then I picked up the Miracle Piano Teaching System. Uh, cart for the NES, which the cart is only moderately rare. Uh, the actual piano keyboard itself, that's what's rare to find. So if I can ever find that, which I actually saw one, ironically, uh, about a month or two ago, but I didn't think I'd run into the cartridge, so I didn't pick it up, and it was like 60 bucks, kind of out of my price range at the time. Uh, but still cool, and if I ever find that, you know, maybe I'll pick that up and do a review. One of my favorite games as a kid, uh, Wizards and Warriors Iron Sword. This is another fun game. Uh, it's not rare or uncommon at all. Very cheap, very common, but fun. If you have an NES, totally recommend picking that up. Uh, Destination Earth Star, which I don't know what is about, but it looks kind of okay. It's just one of those generic space fighter games for the NES, unfortunately, so it doesn't really look like anything fantastic. Uh, Marble Madness. Pick that up for a buck. Uh, it does have some label wear and label damage, but for a buck, I mean, how can you complain? There's a guy that I see at a flea market that I go to all the time that he has a lot of NES games in the back of his trailer that maybe their labels aren't so great or they're a little water damaged, but for a buck, I mean, you, you know, you can't beat it. It's still the same game, so why pay five or eight bucks elsewhere? Uh, I also picked up Solstice, uh, which is kind of like an RPG, I think. Uh, this is a more uncommon game, one of the original Black Box series, Spelunker, for the NES. Wayne Gretzky Hockey, kind of uncommon, not too uncommon. Jackal, which uh, looks really fun. I just saw uh, Cinemassacre's review of that with Mike and Bootsy, and looks like a fun game. Never played it, but can't wait to try it. Tiger Heli, which I always see is a really super common game, um, so I'm curious to play this. I mean, maybe it was good since it's so common, a lot of people bought it. I guess it was a clearance pin game, so, you know, it might be good. Who knows? Only a buck. And then Mario Brothers, one of the original Black Box series, got this for ten bucks, so really cheap, good deal. Uh, Popeye, another original black box series. I think I paid uh, five bucks for that. I think I honestly, I do not remember. I didn't pay too much for it. I think I paid like five for that. Castle Quest, another RPG type game for the NES. Bad Dudes, which looks pretty fun. The Little Mermaid, which I've heard nothing but good things about on the NES, so uh, give that a try. I've heard a lot of good stuff. It's made by Capcom, and a lot of the Disney games were great. Uh, WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge, a pretty uncommon game. Uh, I think I got this for a buck. Buck? Maybe no more than like three bucks, two, three bucks. So uh, 
you know, good game, fun. And a very uncommon game that I picked up for 10 bucks, Star Trek The Next Generation on the NES. It's about a $30 game, and it's pretty darn rare. So, uh, very cool. I just love the picture of all the, uh, the Next Generation cast on the front label and everything. So, that was a cool find. Didn't expect to see that. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for September for Flea Market and various finds and pickups here and there. So hope you enjoyed seeing all the crazy stuff I picked up this month. And I promise that uh, those happy handheld reviews are coming. The PC reviews are coming. Um, so I'll see you guys next month. Until then, happy hunting.